What is the weirdest mammal alive today? While there are plenty to choose from, I would hedge my bets by saying that giraffes would appear on at least a few lists. With their long necks, spotted coats, and extraordinary way of drinking, it's hard to argue this point. Along with this, their modern relative, the okapi, isn't any less weird, as, in contrast to its relatives on the savannah, this animal of the rainforest is much smaller, with a dark coat of fur and zebra stripes along its back. Travel back a few million years, however, and you'll find many weird relatives of the giraffe that are completely different from their modern-day counterparts. How many million years? Well, roughly 20 is when this group of animals split from all other artiodactyls, a group of hooved mammals with an even number of toes. At this point, the Earth was experiencing a cooling period, which caused a reduction in tropical forests and a spread in open grassland. This meant that many early giraffe relatives superficially resembled other ungulates at the time, such as antelope and deer, by having smaller body sizes and horn ornamentation. Still, this latter point is where giraffes differ slightly, as they went pretty crazy with theirs. This is illustrated best in the earliest known giraffe relatives discovered, the Paleo Marissidae. This group's headgear consists of a pair of appendages over the eyes, and a fabulous one that extends from the back of the skull, which is either Y or T-shaped depending on the genus. Whether or not these appendages can be called ossicones, however, is up for debate, as obviously, with them being extinct, we can't confirm this. For those who don't know, to be counted as ossicones, the appendages must be made out of bone and have a permanent skin covering. This is unlike horns that are covered in keratin instead of skin, and antlers that are made of bone but are shed every year. These ossicones, though, are only found in specimens that are thought to represent males, with females lacking them entirely. Along with these supposed ossicones, Paleomerissidae males also have a rather unique set of canines, with the top two being enlarged. This feature resembles the saber-like canines found in musk and Chinese water deer. But as far as I'm aware, whether or not they were used in combat as these species do is unconfirmed. But these features were about to be taken one step further as we move along 5 million years to our next animal, Prolibotherium. Now, I need to point out something about this genus before I move on, and that's its confusing placement within the giraffe family tree. Initially, it was described as being related to the genus Sevatherium. It was then said that it might be a basal member of the whole giraffe family, and recently, it was suggested that it represents its own family. It may change again in a few years, who knows? But if it stays as a giraffe relative, then this genus was the first to make it to the animal's current stomping ground of Africa, being found in the northern regions of the continent. Described in 1961, this species caught everyone's attention for a very strange feature indeed. The animal's occipital condyles are fused. Oh, and these animals' head appendages are massive. The aforementioned fusion of the occipital condyle holds these structures in place. Said structures have also been used to tell the sexes of this genus apart. Females have a much more minimalistic set that consists of four prongs which forms what has been described as an X shape. However, this structure is expanded in males to form a butterfly shape. This larger pair of appendages has been described as possibly being used for display in order to attract females. This need to attract females has been seen as a driving force behind many features that have cropped up in extinct giraffe relatives. Even in modern giraffes, their long necks are thought to have evolved through a need to compete for females, with males using them to whack each other during fights over mates. But sometimes, this need to compete can lead to highly specialized features not seen in any other animal, as is the case for our next genus, Discocerix. Found in 1996, the fossil material of this animal consisted of a brain case and neck vertebra. But even from this, scientists were able to tell this was a very strange animal indeed. 
For one, its neck vertebrae were pretty big, with the atlanto-occipital joint, which connects the neck to the skull, being huge. An adaptation seen in modern-day muskox, which used this adaptation to perform headbutting. But in Discoterix, this feature was a lot more pronounced. The animal's brain case also possessed a large circular disc atop it. This disc was rough along its surface, leading researchers to suggest it may have been covered in keratin. As this material doesn't grow from the bone, it latches onto it, causing this roughness. All these adaptations suggested that this animal might have partaken in headbutting rituals, possibly over females or used them as a defense against predators. This was backed up by research, probably a little too backed up. This research used 3D modeling to test for areas of stress along the brain case and neck vertebra, and compared them to modern day headbutters. They found that Discocherix could absorb these blows more efficiently than any of the other animals. All this showed that combat was a significant driver in the evolution of the head and neck structures in this animal, which led to the idea that this is the reason behind the developments seen in the giraffe's long neck and the previously mentioned neck in fight seen in males of this species. But when and where did this long neck originate? For that answer, we have to travel back 7 million years ago to Eurasia to meet a genus known as Samotherium. This group has several species attributed to it, but one of the more important ones in the evolution of the giraffe's neck is Samotherium major. This species has a skull reminiscent of the modern-day okapi with ossicones that point upwards and curve backwards. However, if we move just down from the head to the animal's neck, we can see something quite interesting. Research in 2015 examined the neck vertebra and found that its structure and measurement were transitional between the two modern species in two ways. The first is that several vertebra have features that are intermediate between the two, such as having measurements that sit in between those of the okapi and giraffe. The second is that while some can be classed as intermediate, some vertebra show features seen in both okapi and giraffes, resulting in what the researchers called a mosaic of features. So, now you hopefully have a better understanding of where certain features of giraffes come from, and have gained a new appreciation for just how weird this group of animals was. This isn't scratching the surface of other weird giraffes though, so if you want a part 2, comment below. Until then, if you want to learn about other weird animals from our past, click the videos on the screen. Until next time, bye bye.